The topic we have chosen to discuss is women's rights, and we will be talking about women's rights more in depth in terms of reproductive health in Manitoba. The themes we will be discussing throughout the presentation will include education surrounding reproductive health, abortion, access to health services, sexual assault, as well as the politics surrounding reproductive health in Manitoba. We will also be discussing the issue of reproductive health within several focus populations, such as the Indigenous community, the 2SLGBTQ plus community, and the sex worker community. These topics may be sensitive to some and relate to many concepts that we have discussed throughout the course, such as personhood and social determinants of health nursing strategies as well as health promotion strategies for reproductive health will also be discussed further throughout the presentation. In Manitoba, reproductive health does not fall under the health department's purview. Instead, reproductive health is overseen by the minister responsible for status of women, who is also the minister responsible for sport, culture, and heritage. It is important to be aware that although this minister oversees reproductive health, they are not in control of the funding for it. This separation can be attributed to our current governing body's political ideology surrounding abortion. That being said, reproductive health services encompass far more than just abortion. It includes STI testing, sex education, birth control, pap tests, counseling, and so much more. As you can see, reproductive health is a vital aspect of health, and to exclude it from the Department of Health's responsibility creates health inequities for women by impinging on their rights for access to high-quality health services they require, which can inevitably lead to adverse health outcomes. Additionally, the separation diminishes the personhood of those needing to access reproductive health services, and it also sends the highly inaccurate public message that women's reproductive health is not an essential part of one's health, which it is. This picture represents the importance of reproductive education to women to help prevent unwanted pregnancies, STIs, and to take care of themselves. I'm discussing the access to proper education about reproductive health regarding contraception and its relation to women's rights. School divisions in Canada have the freedom to choose the depth of the sexual education that they teach. As discussed in class, a major social determinant of health is education. We as women have the right to be fully educated about our bodies and the resources available to us regarding our sexual activities in order to make educated decisions on our own behalf. As the Sexual Education Resource Centre of Manitoba states, we have the right to accurate information about health, including birth control and STI protection. Women need to be aware of all the options available to them, whether it's birth control to prevent contraception, safe sex, the knowledge of accessible resources of where to acquire protective materials, and to be aware of places like walk-in clinics to learn more and to get regular checkups to take care of themselves. My own school experience regarding sexual education was very limited and was based around abstinence as the main goal instead of safety resources regarding sex. This left me and a lot of my female classmates without the proper understanding about how to best care for our own bodies, which prevented us from being able to go about our reproductive health in a safe way. Abortion is health care, although in Manitoba it has not always been that way. Women have the right to control their body, which extends to whether or not they want to continue a pregnancy. Although abortion is legal in Manitoba, our current PC government does not acknowledge the importance of abortion as an essential health care issue and has a history of creating barriers in relation to services for abortion access. For example, in 2018, Manitoba was one of the last provinces to acquire free access to the abortion pill, and when our province finally did get free access, it was only available in Winnipeg and Brandon. So women that lived far away from these areas either had to pay for the abortion pill or they had to travel far distances to get to Winnipeg and Brandon. And that's just not always an option. As you can see, politically created barriers were generated through both geographical and financial means. These factors make it difficult for women to access abortion services, which takes away from their right to choose and challenges the control they have over their bodies. At the end of the day, abortion is an essential part of healthcare and is a basic human right for every woman. Manitoba has the highest provincial sexual assault rate in Canada. However, 52% of Manitoba hospitals and health centers do not have sexual assault evidence kits, require the RCMP to bring them, or refuse to disclose whether they have kits. There is a geographical divide to rape kit access, with far better accessibility for city dwellers. In fact, 11 Manitoba hospitals recommend that survivors drive to either Brandon Regional Health Center or HSC in Winnipeg. 
These hospitals, in many cases, are located several hours away, thus leading to survivors of sexual assault having to commute hours for emergency services. Every survivor is deserving of equal access to justice, and access to sexual assault evidence kits needs to be recognized by the federal government as a human right. To address the sexual assault kit accessibility crisis in Manitoba, sexual assault kits must be made available at every hospital in Manitoba, and universities and Manitoba hospitals must implement sexual assault nurse examiner programs and sensitivity training as a mandatory part of all medical programs, as it is currently not mandatory to learn about sexual assault evidence collection. Sex workers experience unique challenges regarding their reproductive health. According to a study by Ben Y.L., 40% of women working in the sex industry struggle with unmet medical needs. The root of this issue lies not in the women themselves, but in the healthcare system which repeatedly stigmatizes their profession. As stated by the Sex Workers of Winnipeg Co Action Coalition, sex workers frequently experience discrimination within the healthcare environment. This discrimination commonly occurs in the form of bias and invasive questioning, which is often unrelated to the patient's presenting problem. These health interviews, which focus on STIs, drugs, and violence instead of the needs of the individual, can challenge the personhood of the sex workers seeking medical care. As a result of their negative experiences within the healthcare system, sex workers may avoid accessing reproductive health care services except in cases of emergency. The Sexuality Education Resource Centre of Manitoba states that all individuals have a right to respectful health care. Therefore, healthcare workers need to be mindful of how stigma and prejudice may interfere with care involving sex workers in order to limit any negative impacts it may have. Hi, this is Zoe speaking. So this slide is going to be talking about how um, reproductive rights applies to the 2S LGBTQ plus community and more specifically trans and non-binary people's rights. So first off, we can see that intersectionality as a course concept is shown here. Um, and then we also can see personhood. So as we learned from Dean from the Rainbow Resource Center, respecting someone's gender identity, such as using the right pronouns, using the correct name, can help foster personhood. And these are things that cis people are awarded every day. Also, the photo says support your sisters, not just your sisters, as in cisgender, meaning identifying with the sex one was assigned at birth. And this shows that trans women should be included um, and are in fact women, and they need to be included in discussion of reproductive rights and women's rights. Further, there are phrases in the reproductive rights movement that can undermine trans and non-binary people's identities with phrases like pussy bites back, or in the women's march when they use hats that are supposed to be um, clitorises. So when we do things like this, the trans folks may not feel as comfortable to seek out reproductive health, which is relevant to us as future nurses and healthcare providers, because we want to include trans and non-binary people in discussions of reproductive health so we can foster personhood and make sure they're feeling comfortable to access reproductive health care. We need to be knowledgeable on not just people's health care, but um, all of 2S LGBTQ plus reproductive health care as well. Through the intersectionality of issues such as race and socioeconomic status, as well as barriers to healthcare access on reserves, Indigenous women face challenges in multiple areas of reproductive health. These include higher incidences of inadequate prenatal care, inadequate screening for cervical cancer, and a lack of accessible abortion services for women living on reserve. In one CBC article, Cree authors Erica Violet Lee and Tasha Spillett stated that Indigenous women and girls, especially those on reserve and in rural communities, face barriers to accessing basic health care. And yes, access to abortions is a necessary part of the basic health care package that we deserve. This issue links to the theme of Indigenous ancestry as a social determinant of health. According to Raphael et al., Indigenous Canadians are more likely to face poor health outcomes than non-Indigenous populations, experiencing lower life expectancies and higher infant mortality.
Currently, Manitoba has a government that does not treat reproductive health as a healthcare issue. Instead, they see it solely as a women's issue and it is excluded from the Department of Health's responsibilities. Health promotion strategies for reproductive health are needed in order to achieve equity in healthcare for women. Therefore, the basis of health promotion strategies needs to first come from making women's reproductive health a responsibility of the health department. There then needs to be a healthy public policy for reproductive health created within this department. More government attention and increased funding and being available for reproductive health care will then work to remove barriers creating access to these health services for various sectors. Manitoba needs a government that is able to acknowledge reproductive health care as an essential aspect of health. It can help to change current public opinion and any stigmas attached to reproductive health. Additionally, this can encourage women to recognize how vital it is to seek services and care for their reproductive health. Additional health promotion strategies include providing higher quality education regarding reproductive health and health services for women throughout the province, providing increased funds for facilities offering reproductive health services such as women's health clinics, and ensuring that there are safe, inclusive, and welcoming environments available for those needing to seek care for their reproductive health. Health promotion strategies need to be aimed at reducing the stigma associated with reproductive health issues. For example, we need to encourage and not shame individuals for seeking STI tests. We need to promote regular pap tests, and we need to publicly recognize that reproductive health and sexual health is an essential part of health for all individuals, regardless of their gender, occupation, or cultural identity. All individuals should feel comfortable accessing these services. There are many strategies nurses can use to advocate for women's rights. However, our group will focus primarily on the importance of ongoing education for nurses in the area of reproductive health. It is critical that all healthcare providers be educated on the social determinants of health impacting women and understand how social justice issues can affect their female clients. Registered nurses should be encouraged to maintain their fitness to practice through repeated exposure to classes and seminars on reproductive health as well as focus presentations on populations such as sex workers, the LGBTQ community, and Indigenous peoples within Canada. In addition to this, nurses should cultivate continuous awareness on government and institutional policies as they relate to reproductive health, as well as new health services available to their clients. The combination of these two strategies will allow nurses to ally themselves with and strongly advocate for women's reproductive health as well as shape the public policies which determine their quality of care. This presentation had discussed the barriers women face in regards to their reproductive health, including education regarding contraception and safe sex, abortion, access to health services, sexual assault, the Indigenous community, LGBTQ community, sex workers, and the politics surrounding reproductive health in Manitoba. Struggles over women's rights to sexual and reproductive health have been central in advancing women's rights in general. When reproductive health is understood to involve more than just the biological workings of a woman's womb, we can focus on a more woman-centered approach to sexual and reproductive health. Women's reproductive rights are a key player in health promotion. By ensuring access to adequate information, abortion and contraception, contraceptives, sexual assault kits, appropriate political policies, and so on, we can prevent multiple negative downstream concerns for women's safety and make further strides towards gender equality.